Yo, welcome back. This is A&M Reviews. I'm Sky Bear, and I'm with my buddy Sal. What's up, Sal? Not much. Just hanging out. Cool. And we are here talking about Spider-Man Homecoming. Oh, my God. Sal, what did you think about this movie? Okay, first of all, people who are listening, we're going to talk about spoilers. So, spoilers. Um, if you don't want to hear about them, just turn off the audio, go watch it, then come back and review it with us. We're going to talk about everything and possibly stuff that might be hinted at the new future for Marvel. So from that point on, we're going to basically start it off by saying, dude, I loved it. Um, my grade was 8.5 out of 10. It was it was good. Yeah, yeah, I agree, dude. Like, I gave it like an 8.5 to like a, yeah, 8.5. It was pretty good for me. Or like, yeah, yeah, eight and a half. <laughs> it was a solid a solid B. You know, definitely passing grade, obviously. Um, well, and... I, I give it like an A minus for me. Well, like, I yeah. thought it was I thought it was pretty good. Well, <laughs> I mean, I mean like, it's, it's best Spider-Man good, film ever <laughs> that we've seen so far. And um, the Homecoming, but, basically saying, you know, you're coming back to Marvel. Back to you know, Marvel, the back in back. the family. Yes. I mean, it was great. Um so should we start by saying what we liked about it? With me, I I love the fact that they started referencing the New York battle. That was great, oh, yeah. the cleanup, yeah. which ties into saying that, hey, Spider-Man's back in our universe, you know, everything that happened before is, you know, still current. Dude, I was happy when, when Happy was back on. I was oh like, I love that guy. John Favreau. I was John like, Favreau. Yes, I was like, dude, what's up? Yes. Where you been? <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, that guy basically makes the film sometimes i mean you know like his his attitude how he carries himself but at the same time when you know that he's also working behind the scenes and putting his input that basically made made it for me too what else i love the references to uh, scorpion the shocker which i i think they're alluding to sinister six possibly in the new future well so he's doing their venom movie too yeah but it's um it's sony so. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> so, I mean, like, it's got Tom Hardy in it, and it's just like, oh. And, like, I don't know if it's going to connect or not, dude. Well, I mean, I, I'm going to go see it because of Tom Hardy, so. Well, fuck yeah, because yeah, yeah. Tom Hardy. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but, I mean, Sinister Six, so it's uh, the Vulture possibly getting Scorpion, Shocker, Rhino, and Mysterio and all of them, you know, together. Yeah, I think I can it. see that, you know, happening, but not like right off the bat. It might take a few films or something to establish the other characters. Yeah. Well, I mean, we are getting like a planned Spider-Man trilogy again. So, I mean, there's definitely time to, to build it up. <laughs> yeah. And then I love the fact that um, basically Tony Stark is not going to come out in the next films for Spider-Man. Mm. He's like basically just like leading him and saying, okay, now you're on, on your own kind of thing, which is really nice of... Marvel to do that because, you know, in every film you see cameos of, you know, like this one who's Captain America, you know, Tony Stark and referencing other more Avengers. But now it's like uh, Spider-Man is going to be on his own, which basically to me, Spider-Man has done his own shit before by himself and came out okay in cartoons and, you know, animated movies and stuff like that. So I really don't see him as needing the Avengers per se. Mm hmm. That's how I just feel about it. Well, I mean, um, Spider-Man's mostly been, like, self-reliant. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Or they so, basically like, see him as the kid, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, like, you know, once in a while, they meet Spider-Man. And that's when Spider-Man's there. <laughs> exactly. Uh, next thing. Okay. The suit. The voice of the suit. Karen. Dude. I'm like, Jarvis? Female Jarvis? Nah, it- it's... It's Jennifer Connelly. <laughs> but I just I just basically said, Oh dude, it's the female Jarvis. But it was yeah. it was funny how she's like, Call me whatever you want and he's like, Oh, call you Karen, kinda of just yeah. generically. <laughs> okay. Uh the other thing. M, the girl Michelle. Yeah. Amazing. Uh I loved her character, her personality. Doesn't give a shit. Like I'm just here. I don't care. You know? Mm. Just yeah. like, that 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 basically brought it down to earth kind of thing like hey you know guys whatever i'm just yeah. here deal with it what'd you think about the the suit at uh, the end iron oh, iron spider the, suit yeah oh my god i was so pumped because when i saw like, it i was like straight out comics holy shit <laughs> i actually heard a guy behind me so I'm like oh my god i know that suit i'm like dude yes i'm like yeah. another person who knew because 
tell you the truth, when I went to the theater, there was a we you know the, the trailers beforehand, Black Panther. Oh, There's yeah. a guy sitting with his kid. He's like, "Oh, who's that guy?" And literally, I I would I was gonna stand up and be like, "Seriously, you didn't where see have you J- been, bro? <laughs> Civil War, really? No, doesn't ring a bell." And uh, I was like, you know, just maybe people who are not into it who just bring their kid along to see the movies and stuff like that. But yeah, when that guy said Iron uh, Iron Spider suit, I was like, dude, you know what you're talking about. So okay, I was I was so happy about it. The good thing is that he didn't take it because that's a little further into the story, I guess. Arc. Yeah, yeah. Okay, F- future future of Marvel stuff. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. What else? Comic relief in the movie was everywhere. Ned. Oh my god, this movie was so fucking funny, <laughs> dude! Every okay, and this is Spider Man. He's always right. cracking jokes, he, he, like, cracking no matter jokes what, no matter one liner. He's the one liner guy. Like even when he's fucking fighting and it's a big battle and everything, he always has a comeback. He has yeah. a one liner. He has a punchline. The comic relief was everywhere. It was with Ned and Peter himself. Yeah, just like great supporting Tony. characters all around, which was awesome. Because it was it like just, going to a all fucking comedy to, like, show. Yeah. And seeing stand-up comedy like one after another, you know, it's like it, it actually they actually pair them really well. Yeah, yeah, and also just oh man, I realized I'm basically Ned, Sal. Like after watching that movie, because so you're the guy. I, not gonna the chair. lie, like I've, I've done a few of the same things. <laughs> uh, so you're you're the guy in the chair. I am absolutely the guy in the chair. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean everybody. I I actually saw myself in that too. I was like, hey, I'm I'm not the guy who goes out there. I'm the guy who sits back and be like, hey, I got you from here, you know. Yeah. And he texts him, just you know, ring me up. <laughs> but yeah, that's the other thing. Um, I kind of didn't like about the movie. Yeah. Okay. First of all, let's start from the beginning. Yes. No Uncle Ben. Okay. And no Spider Man backstory. I, yeah, no Spider Man backstory, which I I kind of understand why they won't do the uncle Ben because it's been done over mm. and over but at least reference it or put like a little you know short clips of them you know burying him and stuff like that uh well, the same thing with the vulture yeah. like his backstory did not really fit with the vulture that we've seen in comics and cartoons yeah, i know they want to revamp it and make him more I, I don't know modern kind of thing which i'm okay with it but if they could have done they did the vulture backstory you know for the movie you know, he uh, Tony Stark took the contract away from him. He kind of got mad at Tony. If they could have done that, where it says eight years before, why couldn't mm-hmm. they talked about Spider Man's backstory? Just hint at the same time. But do well. I I actually feel I actually feel the opposite with the backstory stuff. Like okay. I'm happy there is no backstory because I mean I've lived through. This is the third re well second reboot. <laughs> Yeah. I lived through three Spider Mans, Sal. And yes. two of them already I already had to see Uncle Ben get shot. I get it. Uncle yeah, Ben okay. gets shot and Bruce Wayne's parents get shot. But and, here's the thing, you yeah, don't necessarily like, need to dead. show <laughs> you don't need to show them getting shot. What I'm hinting at is the quote with great oh, power yes. comes great responsibility. They should have put it somewhere in there. Yeah, well, I am not gonna lie, I have kind of missed that because I mean that's that's, that's like what that's, that's like the himself. silver lining for Spider-Man. Yes. Like no matter what, just that. <laughs> in every in every arc of the comics and the shows, that quote comes into play. You know, with great power comes re- great responsibility. Gwen Stacy, you know, Mary mm. Jane, and you know everybody who's something happened around Spider-Man is because of his power. So, yeah, I just wanted them to basically put that line somewhere inside the movie. You know. Uh, the or other thing. if anything, he could have just said like, "It's like it's just like what Uncle Ben always said." <laughs> exactly. That's all I wanted for them to basically say, "Hey, just like Uncle Ben said, blah blah blah." Oh, you yeah. remember that quote he was always saying? Which what was it again? He's <laughs> right there. Uh, you know. Oh, the yeah. other thing. What's up with the no Spidey sense? I, that's what I caught too. I was like, "Oh wow, there's no Spidey sense in this movie. That's weird." <laughs> and that kind of really bugged me. Until I came home and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to look it up. Yeah. They did an interview and they said, well, what happened with the Spidey sense, you know? And they're Mm. like, well, maybe he hasn't developed them yet. And they're like, okay, well, you know, could it be that he might develop them later on? Because, you know, he 
did just get bitten by the spider. Basically, that's what we think, you know, recently. So, yeah. um, you know, he's he's still mutating. Right. You know, so maybe those powers don't come out until later. Maybe another little accident with a machine it has his power. I mean, because right now we just saw that his the suit kind of empowers him, gives him some more power. But maybe mm-hmm. he hasn't unlocked his true Spider Man power, you know, kind of stuff like a yeah, yeah, yeah. Spidey sense, you. strength, and stuff like that, which actually leads me to the other thing. Okay, the Spider Man suit. Um, how did Ned do? Those kids hack it so the fuck easy. out of that, and it was so fucking easy. I was like, that looked like I could have just done it and just press the button. I know, and it's just like you hacked. You hacked you Tony. Hacked a, you hacked you fucking hacked a, Tony Stark. I know you which... hacked a Stark suit with your fucking laptop. What yes. are you fucking and it's, kidding it's me? A Dell computer too. You know, I mean they're they're good, but I'm saying. I mean, like, this is Tony Stark, good. and uh, he has Jarvis and has Vision with him, so. Just yeah, you think they have more security on those things, and you know, especially a Spider-Man suit that gives you all those neat gadgets. Yeah. Okay. Um, what else can I say? Oh, okay. This is another thing that I wanted to point out. Okay, because of the uh, spider power, the superhuman strength. Did you notice when he, uh, when the vulture, collapsed the building on top of him? Did mm. that bring a little memory back into your head? From a certain yes, comic. Yes, I yes, the the classic fucking covers. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um for people who don't know, there's a there's an arc which is Spider Man issue thirty through thirty three. Uh it's the arc of the uh master planner um from the Amazing Spider Man. This is when Steve Ditko was still doing the art for Amazing Spider Man. And I think it was the last arc he worked on with uh, Stan Lee. He's trapped under the sewer because he's going to retrieve a uh, serum that um, is going to cure his Aunt May because she got a blood transfusion through Peter. And Peter's blood is radioactive, so she got poisoned. So she's in the hospital. So he has to go retrieve this from a lab. And the lab's in the sewer. He goes there, and I think, I can't remember right, but I think somehow, I think he's fighting someone down there. There's an explosion, and then it all just collapses and falls on top of him. And he finds himself trapped, and he gives up until he starts thinking about his Uncle Ben. You know, and, you know, things start going through his head and he's like, I can't give up. I can't give up. So he summons all his spider strength. And it's basically, I want to say shot by shot when he's standing up, you know, in the, mm-hmm. in the movie, in the comic, it's like lifting the whole building. And you see, you know, young Spider-Man in the movie lifting it up and saying, I can't give up. I, you know, it's basically iconic scene. So I think yeah. that was a little small tribute to the Amazing Spider-Man number issue. I think it's 33. Um I think a lot of people saw it, but they didn't want to hint at it, like saying, like, yeah, I know that scene. But uh, to me, it was, like, very nicely done. Uh, Did not overwhelm you. It just happened. And if you saw it, you pointed it out. Somebody would be like, oh, yeah, I remember it. Really subtle, which was nice. I liked it. Oh, and dude, um, fucking. What is it? Um, Yeah. Um, Sorry. Michael Keaton. (laughs) Yes. The Vulture. Holy shit. (laughs) God damn, I love Michael Keaton. <laughs> like, yes. that's basically it. Like, Michael Keaton was a good choice, guys. I appreciate it. No, that that, that guy basically played the character to, you know, down yeah. to the key. Uh, you never and knew when he and was... It's cool to it's cool to see, you know, Batman, you know, be a villain. It's just like, ooh, I like that. <laughs> that's, that's another thing I was going to hint. I'm like, a lot of people don't remember him that he was Batman. So, <laughs> I was kind of... Worried about that going into the movie, but then after I saw him, the you know for the first time, I'm like, okay, this guy knows how what he's doing. Yeah, and oh, dude, that fucking twist, you know, toward you know towards like the homecoming dance. Yes, when he opened the door. Yeah, god damn, I that fuck. I didn't up, see Sal. that. I didn't see that until I was like, whoa. I was and like a split second. I was like, did. did did he go and kidnap the girl? Like, what's going on? I'm I was like, just thinking, oh, like, shit, oh, it's her dad. shit, this is happening. <laughs> no, yeah, it threw me off for a split second until I said, oh, this is the dad. I'm like, damn. That was, like, that was one of the moments where I was like, this is a good movie. Because <laughs> throughout the film, the vulture was saying, you know, I'm doing this for my family mm-hmm. and my kid. Yep. And he kept saying that, and I was like, okay, you know, he, who can be his, you know, his wife and kid, you know? Yeah. 
from the comics. Uh, I don't remember him having a family. I just remember him as an old guy, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But when I saw him open the door, I'm like, oh, snap. This shit got real right here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what about the when he's going chasing the van, going through the town, or was it the, the neighborhood? Oh, yeah, where he's just the like... The tribute to Ferris. Yeah, yeah, just yes. like, what happens when he doesn't have buildings? <laughs> yep. And then uh, oh my God. it was basically was the tribute to Ferris funny. Bueller's Day Off. Oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. too. Oh, my God. I, it, like, it was basically... When that whole... Actually, when that was, like, happening, you know, I was thinking when I was watching the movie, I was like, huh, this is a lot like Ferris Bueller. And no, then the all same, of a sudden they had it in I was the like, wait, movie. This is I was same... like, yeah. This is the same thing, but just uh, with more crashing and shit going on like yeah, yeah. he's not doing it I was like okay and then the fact that they referenced it in the movie I was like and, and, he, right, and he acknowledged it job, like guys. that's a good movie <laughs> yeah I was like oh my god this is just basically it's like a death pool scene right there like breaking you know the fourth wall which he didn't though but I'm saying like mm-hmm. he references something that they're playing homage to Yeah, and but the, that, was, know, that was great and I just loved how fun this movie was it was great like, it was fun um yeah, I, like, it's a family you know, movie. Like Spider Man has always been your, you know, like this was like really, you know, f- like really neighborhood friendly Spider Man. Yes, or friendly uh, all neighborhood ages. Spider-Man. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, all ages. I mean, uh, I couldn't see somebody not taking their kids to go see it. It's Spider Man, yeah. dude. Every little kid wants to be Spider Man, you know. Yeah, Spider Man's he's a kid too, so why not? Um, yeah. Well. A little question that I have for the vulture um, at the end, the bonus. Um, oh, yes. Remember that? Yes. After yeah, credits. <laughs> yeah, after credits. Uh, Scorpion goes up to him and says, "You know, do you know who Spider Man is?" Even though he does know, he said, "I don't." Yeah. Do you think he kept it a secret because he wants it for himself? Like he wants payback, or he might. He Just, might wait, or do you think Vulture might lead the Sinister Six with that information? That's the thing. Um, I can see it both ways, saying that he wants that information for himself to lead yeah. the group to, you know, destroy Spider Man, or mm. since he saved him at the end, he says, you know, man to man, you saved me, so you know, I hate you, but at the same time, my daughter loves you, and I got to give you props because you saved me. So, yeah, you know, I can't, I can't. Double cross you right now. And the other thing, okay, family moved to Oregon during the trial. Mm-hmm. He says uh, his family was there to visit him in jail. Do you think it was the family or somebody who's trying to bail him out? Because mm-hmm. remember, well, I mean, like we saw the family leaving like in the scene beforehand, so I think it was the family. Okay, and because I was thinking, like he's in Rikers Island, how easy is it to for people to go visit people there? True, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, that's it. Uh, next thing, let's talk about oh, this. Remember Although, the hint, the next hint oh. that we uh, we got a hint for a, a new possible Spider-Man character. Donald Glover from Community, who played Aaron Davis, the guy who tried to buy the guns. Yes, yes. Aaron Davis, that's the uncle of Miles Morales, because he I said, know. my nephew oh my lives here. And when I, when I heard that and I heard his name, I said, your nephew, that's Miles Morales. I know, dude. Holy I'm shit. so fucking pumped for that. Miles Morales is, dude. is in the goddamn Marvel Universe. Ooh. Imagine if yeah, the Sal. next Spider-Man movie, at, like somewhere in the end, like Spider-Man needs to team up with somebody and Miles Morales just pops out of nowhere and says, I got you. <laughs> dude, that would be amazing. It would be. And Although, I don't see I'm why not. Because the if they I, named I, him... Aaron Davis, they must have a plan. Because yeah. you just don't name characters out of nowhere in yeah. movies. You know? And he hinted, I uh, have a nephew who lives, you know, in the neighborhood. Yeah. So, Although, what I'm thinking might happen is, like, what is it? When, like, everyone just, like, fucking retires, right, from doing Marvel movies. Like, that's when, was it, like, real Phase 2 is going to happen. You know, like, where it's happening with the comics kind of, you know, now with, you know, Miles Morales and uh, Kamala Khan and Amadeus well, Cho, you know, being Hulk and shit. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like that's kind of like, that's like Marvel's backup plan. 
Yeah. But, dude, like, we live in such a wonderful age right now. Cause oh, my God. All I these movies are opening possibilities for <laughs> other comic books, minorities coming into, you know, TV and shows and movies. It's it's fucking it's, hype, Sal. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, what else do you want to add about the movie? What did you notice? Oh. Um. Well, I mean, like, there wasn't that much, like, not to love about this movie. I mean, like, it has a couple little quirks, but, I mean, oh, oh, although my one major fucking problem with this movie is just one line yes. that Michael Keaton says. That's when he's threatening Spider-Man in, in the back of the car, and he's like, I'll kill you dead. <laughs> I I fucking lost it, Sal. Like, <laughs> so you're going to be the grammar Nazi here? <laughs> Just like, mm, who the fuck wrote that? <laughs> Give him a raise. No, no, no. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's some. That, you know, I felt like this was in you know not the best superhero or Spider-Man movie, but you know, still like tons of fucking fun. So yes, I, I, it was yeah. such it was really great fun and everything. Oh, and the other thing I loved was when M hinted as like, oh yeah, my friends call me MJ, and people were like, oh, it's yeah. Mary Jane. I'm like, no, 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 no. Her name is Michelle. Yeah. Don't get it wrong. They're just saying MJ, you know. Yeah. Shout out to MJ out there. But that's not MJ. Just yeah. putting it out there. A lot of people are still confused about it. They already said it. It's not her. It's not Mary Jane. Because yeah. Mary Jane Watson like, is different than Michelle. Okay? Exactly. Like, Two different names. get this shit yeah. straight, people. <laughs> yeah, and people are going crazy because they're like, oh, it's MJ. Next movie, they're going to date. Mm, is that going to be Mary Jane? Yeah. They, they might date, but it's not because she's MJ. You know? Right. Just putting it out there. You know? Yeah. So, oh, the other thing, the Stanley cameo. Have you heard of the theory? Yes. You know, Stanley being a watcher in the Marvel Universe, which absolutely makes sense. It makes sense. Uh, in every single movie, he's just a standby character there doing a cameo. And what do watchers do? Just, just watch. Just watch. <laughs> but, oh my god, I just and I, what is it? Fucking seeing Uatu in in Guardian. But like, you saw Guardians, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, fucking seeing Uatu in that. Oh my god, it it made my heart jump for joy, Sal. Because <laughs> celestials are a thing. <laughs> yes, when you know, basically we we kind of knew that once they were going into space, they had to touch upon this. You know, Thanos and everything. Where are the Watchers? You know. But now we saw him talking to them. And yeah. It's <laughs> it great. was funny when he, uh, at the end, he's like, so where's my ride kind of thing. But <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy. I saw it. It was great. Um, just touching on that. Um, remember <laughs> when he's, when he's um, the line where he's like, who's, who's Mary Poppins? Is he badass? And... Star Lord says, "Oh yeah, he, he he's a badass." So he's like, "Yo, it's me, Mary Poppins." Or he's uh, like, I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. Yes. Okay. Recently, I went to a convention and there was a cosplayer dressed yeah. as Mary Poppins, mixed with I forgot Yandu. his name. Um, Yandu. With, Yandu. And it was perfect. She had the teeth. It was basically like plastic teeth. She popped it in. She had the umbrella took a picture maybe i'll post it up um in the video dude when we saw that me and my friend were like oh my god we have to take a picture of her and she was That's about awesome. to go into a restaurant or something so we stopped her and she yeah she was wonderful she posed for us and yeah it was a nice reference to gardens of the galaxy t- volume two okay <laughs> nice. so with that said anything else you want to add about spider-man homecoming no i mean not much else i can say other than go fucking watch it <laughs> yes Oh, and so in the last episode, I recommended The Girl with All the Gifts. And Sal, you've seen the movie at yes. this point? Yes. I watched it, yes. <laughs> all right. Sal, what did you think about The Girl with All the Gifts? Okay, first off, my grade, it was a 7 out of 10. Solid 7. Um, there was some questions that actually got brought up when I was watching the movie that mm-hmm. actually brought the score a little lower. But um, overall... Yes, it does have its problems. I, yes. I, I will admit that. Yes. It does have its problems. However, well, you got to fir- look through that. <laughs> yes. The first thing, I really loved how they reimagined the zombies. Uh, having, uh, you know, 
a symbiotic relationship between or the girl having the symbiotic relationship with the with was it the fungus in her head which is what causes yeah. you to become a zombie exactly. uh you get infected with the fungus goes into your brain roots into your brain controls you and it makes you feed off other humans and you are called hungries um kind of like the last of us in a way but he, yes <laughs> yeah um that was great i love that you know it's not the same old like oh brains brains no it's a completely yeah. new zombie which i i mean i think they probably already did it but this one actually brought it into reality and saying like this is how they work this is what happens in their brain and mm. we are trying to find a cure yeah with that said there was no backstory to start the movie with which would have been nice to have a little flashbacks you know how they got to the you know the base you know i kind of wanted to see some flashbacks you know of mm. what was out there but to tell you the truth it actually worked because once they went above ground and you saw the zombies hitting the fences yeah, that makes you. That made me go like, "Oh wow!" Yeah, well, they're, they're like when there. I saw this movie, I had no idea like anything about it other than like I remember I saw the trailer a long ass time ago, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I wanted to watch this," and then I didn't know it was a zombie movie until like we were above ground and like you just saw them everywhere. I was like, "Oh, this is a zombie movie, zombie movie." Okay, shit. <laughs> no, see, for me it was uh, cuz you know, I went on Amazon and I saw it and you know, the little synapses and it basically said, you know, zombie movie kind of thing, you know. And I was yeah. like, oh, "Okay, okay, I know what I'm getting myself into." But if I would just gotten thrown into it, if you basically like, would have gone to your house and say, "Hey, we're going to watch this movie and you're going to fucking like it." Okay? Just pay attention. I would have yeah. been basically the same thing. That that scene when she's going above ground, yeah. And you see the zombies, I would have been like, holy shit, you yeah. know, what the fuck is going on kind of thing. But mm. yeah, um, I understand they, um, they're trying to find a cure, but it's also catch 22 in the sense of like, you, you're you rooting for the girl. She's nice. She's cute. She's innocent. She's nice and friendly, you know, being polite and everything. If you find the cure, you have to kill her. Right. So... You want to kill her and get the cure, or do you want her to live and not get the cure? Right. The same thing with like the cat in box, which they always bring up. Mm -hmm. The cat is alive or dead. There's only one way to find out. Open the box. Yep. If not, you assume that he's both dead and alive. Another reference to the zombies. They're not dead, nor they're alive. They're somewhere right. in between. <laughs> um, the other thing was I love the simplistic shots. When they're out in the field and camera pans out and you see just open fields and they're walking mm -hmm. through the fields, uh, even in the city when it's just like going above the, you know, the rooftops and everything. I know there's a lot of uh, post-production there, which yeah. to make nat like nature took over, like all those trees are not there, but mm -hmm. just the shots in themselves, I mean, nice and smooth, wonderful. Not a lot of like information you have to put in them. But just with those shots, you get the idea. Wow. It's the future. This is how it is. Nobody's around. Mm -hmm. This is what we have to deal with. You know, that's kind of the mentality I was getting into. Like, okay, if I was there, what would I do? Yeah. Would I go this way or that way? And you saw them in the in the, in the mall. They're not really active. They just root themselves like trees, like fungus. Mm -hmm. They're just standing still until something triggers them, which, according to them, was the smell. And that's yeah. another thing I kind of wanted them to explain a little more. What are mm -hmm. they smelling? Are they smelling the living cells, the body odor, certain chemicals from the body giving, you know, sweat, body odor? Yeah. I kind of didn't get that answer. I don't know if you know the answer. Well, it's like in Walking Dead, you know, just like. When you know, like you cover yourself up with guts and you're invisible to them. Yeah. The other yeah. thing it's um then they use the cream, the blocker cream. How how does it work? Um, is it the same it's thing like sunscreen? As, <laughs> is, is it is it covering the pores or I mean, because what is it covering up? What smell? That's my thing. I'm like, because well, you can be sweaty and your sweat's already on your clothes. So what is it good to put the cream on your hands, unless you're secreting like gel from your skin or something or a certain chemical you know 
Yeah. Um, well, I mean, like, you got to put that all over your body. Yeah, so. and they just they just use the, like, little fucking can- tubes that are, like, no bigger than a travel size toothpaste, you yeah. know? And they're like, oh, these are, you know, ration. Well, great, but they're small. Mm-hmm. How are you going to block everything if you had to put it all over your body? And we saw him, the guy put it on his arm, and then the girl um, put it on her face. Mm. So I'm like, is that the only, like, only certain parts of the body that are exposed? I really wanted them to talk a little more about that, but they didn't. So, I mean, I can live with it, you know. Yeah. It did bring the score a little lower because of that. They didn't explain a lot of things. The mm. other thing that bugged me was when they referenced the babies eating the mothers from the inside out. Yeah, uh, it didn't bug me because of the, how they describe it. What bugged me was thinking babies don't have teeth. They made it work, Sal. <laughs> and before the baby comes out, they don't have nails. So if they're clawing them their way out, I don't think it's their nails. Could it be that they're somehow mutated in the way they get made it back? work, Sal? It just life, bugged me from a, life like, finds a way. <laughs> I mean, I, same thing. I, I'll deal with it, but it did bring the score a little down. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, the other questions were like uh, basic questions, like you know, where are they? You know, what part yeah. of the world? I mean, not the filming location, but you know, the story. Where's it taking place? How long has oh. this been taking place? For you know, when did it start? How long mm. had it been in the bunkers? Um, you know, do they know where they start, where it started, and how? Mm. Was the fungus from Earth or outer space? I mean, just questions like that that I would probably like to see, like flashbacks, not taking half an hour to explain, but just like certain flashbacks, you know, maybe a meter yeah. hit the Earth, brought the spores in, you know, from outer space, would have been nice. People started getting sick around the world, airports easy to transport, you know, back to the, you know, other sources of movies. Mm-hmm. Plane travel is easy to spread diseases kind of thing. Um, just basic answers. I mean, that's kind of what I wanted. Yeah. Well, I I mean, like, I agree with you. Like, I, I definitely would have liked to have known this information as well. Um, and, you know, like, that's why, like, it's not a perfect movie at all. <laughs> but I feel like the concept of it was so like intriguing and just like the way that this movie was made was just really fucking good so i was like oh yeah this is a good movie i really like this <laughs> yeah i mean the other w- reason is that it's a fresh air to the, all the zombie movies out there exactly this is not and also this was only made for four million pounds which is like holy shit that ain't bad <laughs> wow i did not know that that's yeah, interesting <laughs> I mean, it, to pull this and actually to have Glenn Co- Close appear in the movie for that right? budget was, was that low. I was expecting that. I was like, yeah. oh, shit, Glenn Close is in this movie. <laughs> yes. Um, the other thing was, um, who was it? The teacher. Yeah, Jim Argenton. Yes. Or, um, or yeah. just, was it Justina? Uh, Justine or, or whatever. Just to know? Just to know. Um, just when they're in the... Just to know. <laughs> When they're in the in the what's it the hospital or the building, mm-hmm. and they're just sitting back and they're talking, it, it was, I think it's her and the sergeant. When she says something to the um, reference of like I'm not a good person, I've done things that are bad. Yeah. Uh, what is I mean? I wanted to them to basically reference that because since the beginning, it kind of feel awkward that she was, you know, attached to the girl. And then, you know, trying to pat her on the head when she got in trouble. She was mm. crying. Did something happen? Did she have kids? Did she lose a kid? Or was she killing kids? Was she one of the persons who went out there searching for these kids? Well, that's also one of the things I enjoyed about this movie. Where, like, some things you just don't get the answers to. And you're just left to your imagination. We're like, oh, man. Like, how... How did you get here? You know? No, and then like when you said that you saw this more than once and I was like, okay, now I see why he saw it one more than once. He's yeah. trying to look for these answers. Um, it didn't happen only once. It happened multiple times when she's like, you know, she's crying and at the end of the movie when she's teaching the kids and then right before mm. she gets up, she's clearly crying. 
Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, people would be like, oh, it's because she's the last person, you know, left alive. No. There's more to it. Look, she's exactly. emotional. She she still gets up to teach these kids. If you're the last person on earth, why would you get up to teach kids? But then There's also, something there. just like, what happens if she says no to this little girl? Well, she can't go inside because she locked it from the inside. Oh really? no! You're I, right. no no! You're right. right. I thought there's she has the emergency the code. No, because there's the emergency uh, lever on under the stairs. Yeah, and yeah. like also, I am sure like if they wanted to get in there, they could get in there. Yeah, yeah, but you gotta understand, the little girl doesn't want to kill her. She wants to protect her. Exactly. So even though she she said, "I wanted," you know, when the sergeant goes goes out to look for her, and says, mm. "Why did you come out here?" He's like, "Oh, I came looking for you. No, but I left yeah. you." And her back there locked. No, the doors were open. Oh, you mean she's in danger? Kind of thing. You know, she's like saying, look, I wanted to protect her. I didn't want nothing to happen to her. I'm mm-hmm. just doing this because it's the next step of evolution. That's how I saw yeah. it. But if you're good, all for next step for evolution and you want to keep two humans alive or selected humans, why? Are they your pets? But also, like, why she did it was, well, to me, you know, she was thinking that, wait, if I help this person, then my entire species is going to die. Yes. And then that's why she's like, well, why why are you over me? <laughs> exactly. That's Which, how I saw it, like, too. And, like, when that happened, I was like, oh, fuck, damn, this is, I like this movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Take that, Glenn Coast. Close. Uh, she fucking... <laughs> told you no but i mean uh yeah i saw it that way too um it's like why is my life more i mean why is your life better more important than mine yeah and you know what there's more of us out there than you so isn't that kind of hinting at like you're slowly getting replaced and yeah i mean she did keep you know her teacher alive uh, which was nice of her because she really really was fond of her since the beginning Mm. but yeah, ew, and the little kids. Dude, those little kids knew how to act. The the rat girl. I was very impressed. <laughs> the rat girl, oh my god, like with the rat and like, come on, like I'm mm-hmm. luring you, and then all the kids acting like little savages kind of thing, you know? Yeah, like oh shit. It kinda of freaked me out a little bit. <laughs> no, yeah, and then uh it reminded me of <laughs> the the episode of The Simpsons, um Lord of the Flies. Oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> And I was like, dude, these kids are, like, dead on. Like, even the grunting noises and everything, I'm like... Yeah, and, like, the little girl who's, you know, the main character, like, she she did a pretty good job, oh, you know? She was like, yes, huh, I was not annoyed by you. Weird. <laughs> like, good What's her name? You, uh, Sinia. Sinia, right? Um, uh, yeah, the the so. actress. Yeah. Dude, like, her acting skills were, like, amazing. Like, she... Like I want to see Literally, this kid in another what was it? movie. The, the fi- first fifteen minutes, she was in a chair, and her emotions and the way she delivered lines and everything. I was like, "Wow, this kid can do it with just being in a chair." You know, it's like mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah. And the character, how like her eyes, even her eyes gave a lot of information, like looking across the room and stuff like that. Mm. It was just amazing. I give it. I, you know, she was really. Really well casted for this movie. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So, yeah, I gave it a 7 out of 10. I mean, what was your grade? Uh, I mean, I don't know. It's kind of hard because, like, at first, I actually didn't really like this movie. I thought it was just, like, okay. Yeah. But then, like, I just kept thinking about it. And then I rewatched it again, and then I rewatched it again. And I was, and I was like, slowly grown to, like, like it more and more. So... I don't know, like, hmm, what would I give this? You know, I'd probably give it, like, a seven and a half. Okay. I mean, but, you know, I, I'm still going to watch seven it. And a half. I'm still yeah. going to watch it again. I mean, it's really interesting, and I'm, I can I can see myself, like, showing it to another, another couple of friends and being like, let's watch this movie. Yeah. You and know? also, you know, like, I kind of like how the fact that it, well, you know, even though it is a zombie movie, like, it doesn't overwhelm the movie, like, by making you think, oh, God, another zombie movie. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's just, um, 
nice to see a zombie movie that's not really a gory zombie movie. If, you, if does that make sense? Like, well, I this don't one, know, <laughs> no, because I mean, this one, this one seemed like it was playing more on the characters and the zombies themselves. Yeah, I mean, it was more along the lines of like, this is the girl; she's the last hope. Like, I am legend kind of kind of story but without the zombies they were there but they did not take over the whole story Mm -hmm. just the idea of them going through you know from point a to point b having the girl who's the possible cure but at the same time she can kill us you know and trying to accept her because i mean there was a scene where she was reading the book to the um to the soldier the the Soldier the Dad, I forgot his name, who got mm-hmm. trapped in the in the shop. Um, they were re- she was reading the book, and then like he, she's like, "You want to see the picture?" And the guy's like, "Yeah." So she shows him the picture. Then the sergeant, as in the morning came, they're waking up, and he's like, "Oh yeah." She calls him by uh, the soldier by his first name, and the sergeant goes like, oh, "You're getting attached to her, kind of thing." And he's like, well, "Dude, like she's a little girl. She's friendly. She's polite. You know, it's a mm-hmm. little girl." You know, so they started, I started seeing like how if I was there, it was going to revolve about around her, mm-hmm. how I needed to see her as a human. But at the same time, like she is a zombie, but she's more human because she behaves herself and even warning them, like, I can smell you get away. Okay? I mean, mm-hmm. you know, it's like she knew what she was doing and sometimes and she was giving you fair warnings and stuff like she's not there to like destroy you. You know, right. so yeah, I mean, I love the, I like the movie. Still seven, seven out of ten. I mean, some answers I'm never gonna find out yeah. what they well, are. Well, cool. I'm glad that you enjoyed the movie, so. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm gonna probably share it and show it to some friends right before uh, the Walking Dead season starts up again. <laughs> yes. This is, this is a good like, you know, saying like, oh, you like the Walking Dead? Like, watch this. Like, let's yeah. get in the mood. <laughs> yeah, you know, a little marathon of old zombie <laughs> movies with new ones wouldn't hurt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so now it's time for our minute of tribute. Um, this is where we touch upon somebody who recently passed away and how they're important in movies and TV shows or anything that we consider pop culture. Um, recently, uh, Joan Lee, the wife of Stan Lee, died. Uh, she died in July 6, recently, 2017. She died of a stroke um, when she was in the hospital. She's been in the she was in the hospital for over a week, and she finally passed away due to the stroke. Um, she was ninety three years old. Um, she was born in nineteen twenty four. And what can we say about her? I mean, it's not that she made any comics or anything, but she was the wife of Stanley, who's you know in every relationship. There has to be your more support. It's not your coworkers, but they're you're always going home. There's somebody receiving you at home saying you can still do this, you know, keep going. And mm. Stanley had her. And I do believe that if she it wasn't for her, Stanley would have not been in the comic industry for a long time. Cause he even said that he wanted to quit. Well, actually, Sal, uh, I saw a video recently where uh, someone asked him about that and uh, Stanley was saying like you know he was talking with his wife and he was like oh man like I don't know if I can keep doing this or not like I just want to like leave and his wife said like well why don't you just do one comic like the way that you wanted to do it and then yeah. if they don't like it then you're leaving anyway and yeah. Stanley was like oh shit yeah I'll do that <laughs> And yeah. then he made Fantastic Four. <laughs> that's actually that's the the next thing I was going to talk about because uh, the yeah. Fantastic Four was actually modeled after his own family. Mm-hmm. Uh, he saw himself as you know the lead character, then his wife, you know, an Invisible Woman, and then the two kids, um, you know, Human Torch and the Thing. Uh, even though the Fantastic Four aren't a family, but they're still you know a group, a team that considers themselves family. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not going to touch upon the kids, but he they had two kids, and one of them didn't make it past birth. But, uh, yeah, he said that he, because of that, he wanted to quit, did Fantastic Four, and then took off like a rocket. So he stayed back. Mm-hmm. And after a while, um, 
he said there was multiple times that he wanted to leave because either cells or, you know, um, other issues were happening. And every time he wanted to quit, he did a new character, you know, that he thought about and or he co-created with other people. And he said that the industry was just a wonderful place to work at because everybody in the office, even she says that, that when she would go to the office, she would know everybody, not from, you know, the business point of view, but the personal, like he, she knew who's, who their wives were, how many kids they had. They would go to their weddings, you know, birthdays of the kids. They said they were actually a family working together instead of just, mm-hmm. you know, coworkers. And she said, you know, it was a wonderful place to live through that that time where comics were not that popular. You know, she even referenced that it wasn't like Europe where comics in Europe were being printed in glossy pages and, you know, hardcover and everything. America kind of took it as, oh, comics, the thing kids read, you know, or later like, oh, this piece of filth, you know, kind of throw it in the garbage. But she even says we used to go to parties and when we would be introducing to other people like oh you're who oh i'm joan and who's your husband oh stan oh what does he do he writes writes what writes comics oh you mean that okay and they would just walk away from her Mm -hmm. so she said you know we would get shunned sometimes but you know and he would actually be ashamed of what he did but she would always encourage him you know what you're doing something good. You're doing something good. Keep going. Keep going. And if he said, I don't want to do it anymore, she would say, oh, I'm with you. You don't want to do it. Stop doing it. But just do the final thing at your own, you know, your own pace, your own rules. It's your last project. Go out with a bang kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And yeah, because of that, you know, like who, what else do you want in life but a person behind you supporting you all the way, even if you're taking the way out or, you know, suggesting a new project or something you always want that person to say yeah i'm behind you all the way yeah exactly yeah and um she uh she was with him during um spider-man the animated series she was actually the voice of madam webb from uh, 1996 to 1998 um so everybody knows madam webb who was the guide for Mm spider-man um that was her um wonderful lady she was nice i saw an interview with her she was really polite you know carried herself well um never saw her i saw her from far away at a convention but didn't get to speak to her Mm. but she was always next to stan walking with him you know talking to him holding his hand um we actually saw them in a cameo recently if people didn't see this uh cameo x-men apocalypse they actually come out together in the cameo with stan lee um in You know, she was there with him all the time. And unfortunately, she passed away too soon before he did. Um, And this is basically going to be the tribute to uh, Joan B. Lee. And saying, you know, here's your minute of tribute. Well, Stan, we all have to grow up sometime, I suppose. Even us characters of fiction. Spider-Man. It's time to go. Who is that exotic lady? How did he propose, or how did... Well, he, geez, the first time that he saw me, he said to somebody, I've drawn that girl's face a thousand times. I'm going to marry her. And the man said to him, well, you can't. She's married already. And he said, that doesn't matter. And six weeks later, I was in Reno, divorced and married to Stan 54 years ago. That's Stan Lee. He's quite a guy. I think he's truly special. Well, Madam Webb... Where to now? Face front, true believer. We are going to find the real Mary Jane Watson. What? It has been a long, hard journey. And I think you are finally entitled to some happiness. Amen to that, dear lady. Amen to that. And we're back. Um, So that was a minute of tribute for Joan. And now we're going to talk about the next episode. Yes, next episode on the... 28th of July is Atomic Blonde and holy shit Sal I've been so stoked for this movie (laughs) like ever since the trailer dropped I was like god damn I'm gonna watch that yep I think I remember you talking about it um 
you uh, you sounded really hyped about it. I actually saw the trailer a few uh, weeks ago, and I'm excited to see it. Yes, and for those of you who don't know, Atomic Blonde is about an undercover MI6 agent is sent to Berlin during the Cold War to investigate the murder of a fellow agent and recover a missing list of double agents. And... Holy, just, I mean, like, it's got Charlize Theron in it, James McAvee, like, and uh, who else? John Goodman. Like, why Why the fuck wouldn't you want to watch this movie, basically? It's basically a spy movie mixed into three different spy movies mixed with Alias, mixed and, with... And, like, get a touch of John Wick and boom, you're, that's what you're good say. to go. A bunch of guns <laughs> shooting... <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean it, the I seen the posters. They're very simplistic, but still gets my attention. Atomic yeah. Blonde, just the name. I mean, it's it's a movie we're gonna watch and we're gonna review it here. And so remember, there's gonna be spoilers. So either you go watch it and then listen to us, or you put up with our spoilers. Mm-hmm. Just deal with it. <laughs> Yeah, and also the uh, next movie recommendation from us, we're throwing out Paprika, uh, which if you haven't seen Paprika, it is a phenomenal anime film from director uh, Satoshi Kon. Uh, he's the or he was the director of Perfect Blue and Tokyo Godfathers, and goddamn, this movie is fucking insane, right, dude? <laughs> dude, um, the. It basically takes you into a trip, makes you, makes you feel like you're on acid, and you're watching The Matrix mixed with, what else? Inception. Except Inception, yes. Yeah. Like, they dive into dreams. Shoot, dude, this movie, I actually had to watch it twice to know when they were diving into dreams mm-hmm. and being in the real life and stuff. Oh, um. I don't know how you watched it. I watched it in Japanese and English. And oh, I just watched it in uh, in Japanese because like I threw on the English dub just to hear it, and I was like, nope, English dub still sucks. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the thing with um the movie. Sometimes you either want to watch it in subbed, you know, the, the Japanese audio, which I prefer watching Japanese audio and subtitles because mm. sometimes when they dub it, there's some soundtrack in the back that they kind of take out some sounds you know layovers and, and stuff the voice actors are just so ass like there's there's a scene in this movie but i'm gonna hold off to the next episode which is gonna it's really amazing and yeah i actually saw some clips behind the scenes like extra footage from the uh, director talking about it it's amazing they actually oh. are very detailed yes oh my god and uh can't wait so <laughs> yes okay so with that said sky bear so, with that being said, uh, this concludes our podcast. Sal, it was nice chatting with you, Same as here. always. And uh, what is it? all of our social medias are going to be in the description, so you can follow us and do all that cool stuff. Until next time, keep watching movies. <laughs>